I'm Najmal, Executive Vice President, Market Development, MasterCard, Eastern Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here at Econo Middle East. Thank you so much. Now, when it comes to innovations, in the next couple of years, what are some advantages and challenges from the perspective of MasterCard? Sure. So I think let me talk about the opportunities first because uh, the opportunities are huge. Um, let's take a small example of data, right? I mean, gone are the years when you used to have um, data scientists mining the data and dealing with data warehouse and generating a database and then taking an action on that. Uh, with the advantages in cloud computing and machine learning uh, and a lot of capability that we are building at MasterCard, we can see that um, personalization, you know, offering consumer the message that they want to read at that point in time um, is very much scalable now. You can read consumer choices, their preferences in real time and act on it. Like how many of us have clicked close on the ads, you know, when we are actually browsing a particular page because the message is not relevant for me, right? So now in real time, you can actually have a contextual communication with your customers. So you and I on the same web page do not need to see the same communication. This is just one small use case. So I think data is a huge opportunity. Uh, the second opportunity, which I would say is actually an opportunity plus a challenge, um, and I would frame it first as a challenge and then talk about the opportunity, is as technology scale, uh, it's a responsibility to protect the consumers and the business. Protection from uh, data, protection from you know cybersecurity threats, uh, risk, fraud, scams. And I think a lot of our uh, investment is going into technologies which will be uh, working to protect the small businesses, uh, preventing the fraud, as well as the consumers. So it's a challenge because as technology scale and the consumer adoption is there and the world is moving so fast, you have to make sure at the same time while scammers and fraudsters are keeping up to pace technology, you're always 10 steps ahead of them. So I would say that would be the challenge which also presents another opportunity. Wonderful. And you come into contact with a lot of leaders. How are these leaders driving growth in current times and managing to keep ahead of the curve? So we saw a lot of leaders talk about it today. And I think there are a couple of things that I observe uh, across multiple industries um, that I look at. Um, whether it's logistics or hospitality or, um, uh, or travel or fintechs, I think one of the things that everyone is embracing is that you have the agility and technology allows you today to make mistakes. Mistakes are no longer that costly that they used to be in the past. Uh, you have that agility to experiment at a small scale and it doesn't work, you move on, right? So I think there's a lot of positive momentum of embracing new technologies and experimenting. Okay. Um, the second trend that I see um, is around doing good for the communities. The financial inclusion, you know, the telcos entering into uh, financial services, it's because they want to serve the population that is underserved, you know, that does not have access to financial services. You see a lot of micro lending players do that. So the financial inclusion, uh, the concept of giving back to the uh, communities, I think that's a very, very important uh, theme among all the customers. And the third, I would say, is focusing on um, the back-end process improvement by leveraging technology. So optimizing your business just doesn't mean the front-end or the app and the super app, right? A lot of it is actually your back-end processes automation, you know, the, the, the cost reduction that you can do. And a lot of my customers are investing in technologies, which is extremely important to make sure while their front-end looks great, it's not a lipstick on the pig. And you know, the back-end infrastructure is capable to keep up to that. So those are the three trends that I would see. And last one, talent, people before I forget. Um, there's a, there is a huge understanding and awareness that in order to compete in today's world with so many technologies, it's not the past number of years of experience that's important because you'll never find a person who has like 30 years of experience in AI or in cloud computing, but the mindset of agility, curiosity, challenge the status quo. So I think there's a huge focus on the people and the culture part of it. And if I was to ask you, what would be the key takeaways from the event today? Well, I think it's my last point because as everyone concluded uh, their message, they emphasized the importance of uh, changing their mindset, you know, and uh, technology is a means to an end. It's not an end itself, right? You first define an, a problem and you're like, okay, I have to solve this problem. Okay, here are the two, three technologies that I may be able to use to solve this problem. And how will I do it is by using my people, leveraging my team, right? That's the asset that you have. So it's really about um, people believing in 
uh, the strategy of innovation, people collaborating and people really being obsessed about what they're solving for the customer. So I think that would be the key takeaway and it was a common theme throughout. I'm Najmal, thank you very much indeed for your insights.